This is our relaxed review of the Mercedes Marco Polo facelift. Let's go. So the front of the Mercedes Marco Polo, it's basically the same as just for the front grille, the same update here with the facelift. This is how it looks indeed in the baseline. If you would go for avant-garde or exclusive, you would have some chrome contrast right there in the AMG line, the diamond pin grille. So that's the things you can pick. Those LED lamps now are also available and they have a little bit more modern shape. The length here for the Marco Polo is always at 5 meters 14 or 202 inches. That is the middle length for the V-Class. There are also some AMG wheels here, 19 inch, 17 to 19 inch overall. So this is not the AMG line, but just the AMG wheels. Kevin side blue is the color here, by the way, a really lovely one. And you can see here we already put up the roof to see the full extension. And also on this side, you can see this is the supply for water and also external power. In the rear, the Marco Polo is just different by this very Marco Polo batch. Other than that, since the V-Class facelift, also a little bit more modern tail lamp design. The Marco Polo gets all of the normal V-Class engines, a 2-liter four-cylinder diesel, 163, 190 or 239 horsepower. The top spec, 239 horsepower spec, would be the new 300D, that's the name, the strongest diesel engine for this one then. So this kitchenette is also part of the Marco Polo, so this is the standard deal, also with the sink right there. 40, to be very correct, 38 liters is the tank for the fresh water and 40 liters then for the used water. You also have a fridge by the way, there it is, with some reasonable storage in there indeed. And of course some normal storage, for example here this is a sliding door for, let's say, all the cutlery you might need, for example, here again some storage for wipers or whatever, and also on the top part here. And you can see you can still open it, although the table is installed. There's, for example, here the, the one for the cutlery. So very nicely done also for this demonstration. All set already. Here we go. And you see they actually secure. It's really a soft close. Here, there we go. And it's also secured then again for driving. We can fold in the table right here. And then this bench it also goes forward like this and you can actually really do that with one hand, it's no problem. You might also see that the head restraints are missing here. They're just mounted at the back side. So and there's also a reason for that because here we can actually electrically flip back the seats like this. So this one here this is already quite soft. You can make it softer a little bit. You can adjust actually the softness. Again, also right here. So here with those buttons, you make it stiffer or softer. And you can see it really fits. Um, I'm not sure. I, actually, I think it would be better because this part here would be harder if you, um, you know, just fold yourself around like this. And you see, this is actually, an, again, two adults, full size. And it's actually quite comfortable, but it's, of course, better when you put a small mattress here on top of that. And then you have actually a spot for four adults to sleep in this vehicle. The upper part will show you very soon. So here we go. This one here would be the spot where you store the chairs and the table from the outside. And then you have a cupboard right here. This is one side of it. Then there's also another side, so it's basically split. Maybe, you know, if you split in two people, it's 
split it for two people. <laughs> so here we go. And there's also a mirror. And then you can see maybe through the mirror that you have even more storage right there. This would be primarily for clothes, I think. If you want the upper bed to unfold, here we go. So you have to release that, of course, also while driving, because then the roof would be down. And the same thing you do on the other side. And then you can just leave that one down and have, again, full-size bed on top. So at the moment, they got the pillow right there at the lower end side. But I think I would just prefer sleeping like this because the sun is just coming in here through the windows. That's really nice. And also, when you look at the side, at those beige fabric sides here, left and right, this is so nice again because when the sunlight is just, you know, shining through this, it makes a warm light atmosphere right here. And again, this one would be the full fabric window if you want some more fresh air. And I got here, by the way, via the front seats. So if you just take off your shoes and then step on the front seats, that's no problem to get up here then. Here, upright seating position. Also, uh, like in a normal Mercedes V-Class. Build quality is really good. Also, soft touch here at the top of the dashboard. Here we also have a dark wood veneer. There are different ones available. Aluminum, black piano lacquer, and like also this wood style. There's also matte wood style available. Turbine vents. Those ones are new with the facelift. So, not so much has been done with the facelift, but those turbine style vents, they are one of the news. For the infotainment system, you use this jog, again, press and turn, because this infotainment system here is still no touch. It has not been updated. This is, I think, the biggest disappointment of this facelift. They haven't done, well, they have done something to the engines, a little bit of styling here and there, but they should have changed the infotainment system that it also features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto instruments, rather classical, left side speed, right side RPMs. In the middle part, you have a digital screen. It's not flickering in real life, by the way. Here you can, for example, see some um, consumption info, but also some, you know, telephone info who you want to call, for example. Ghostbusters. And before driving the Marco Polo, let me show you how it looks like cleaned up. This is everything ready for driving, also with head restraints, all the stuff closed and everything cleaned up, nothing flying around. So this would be how you ideally would drive the vehicle. And in this lower unit, you can Control the independent heating and also pre-time it. You can change the temperature up to minus 16 degrees for the freezer. And then this one here is the function for the roof, if you have the electric one. And then you can press it here for open. Now driving the Mercedes Marco Polo with the new 300D and the big question is of course is it any different from a no yeah. <laughs> from a normal Mercedes V uh, V class driving the Marco Polo here you have about mm, 220 something kilograms more of weight mainly due to the kitchen and of course the roof construction and so on but to really feel the weight difference I mean it's just put three more people uh, in a car, would you say you feel the difference? In a very small car, which has a very low power, you would feel in the acceleration, but do you feel in the driving dynamics then, hmm, if you're not a racer, not on the racetrack, that's a tough question. Maybe if you directly drive the cars after each other. Other than that, the good thing of the Marco Polo is that it really drives just like a normal V-Class in, you know, in, in general. This one here then, since the Marco Polo only has one length, it's also the mid-length of the V-Class. And this one here is not too different from the shortest V-Class version because it has the same wheelbase. So, what is different when driving the Marco Polo then? Well, you have this fabric from the roof construction and when you're going over some uneven roads, I'm not sure if you can pick that up on camera yourself, but this fabric there, which is folded, you can hear it moving around just a little bit. With the 300D, the top diesel here, you can drive actually a little bit calmer because you don't have to push the throttle that much. You have abundance of power, even if the car is on a heavy load. So that's actually quite good. 
and also indeed there are less vibrations from the engine as they promised. It feels indeed quite passenger car like. Just when you're at lower speeds and really listen to the engine noise, it you know sounds a little bit different than in the passenger car, although it is the same engine. The steering is soft and easy and you do have some good reaction. It's of course not tuned on a very sporty note, but it doesn't have to be, so it feels actually quite natural. You have a good overview to the front. And also the suspension. There are different suspensions available. Normal one, they call it comfort. Then there's a sportier suspension. I'm not sure why we would go for that one with the V-Class or Marco Polo. And then there's also an adaptive suspension. And when you have that one, we also have that one here. And you can also change some driving modes here. And for example, the automatic also is switching up the gears. So in you know, sport mode, the gears are turned a little bit more and you have a little bit better acceleration. So overall, also good driving feeling here from the Marco Polo. But indeed the thing um, there is a little bit to criticize that there is some more noise definitely coming from this uh, fabric folding of the roof. So, I mean, I think you can still live with that, but it's something you definitely notice. Now we go to the motorway, set the ACC, the Adaptive Cruise Control. That's a very reliable system. And we also feel that at 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour, it's reasonable silent in here as for the noise insulation. And you don't have that with all vans, so especially for a van, this is really a very good noise insulation. And we can also see that you can bring the consumption to about 9 liters on 100 kilometers if you go cruise control and motorway. And to the conclusion for the Mercedes Marco Polo. It profits from the general V-Class updates from the facelift. Well, there are not so many updates, to be honest. More like a model year change. The assistance systems have been upgraded as well. This is maybe something that's an active brake assist, optional with the ACC. Side wind assist is, by the way, standard. You know, no, some new design lines. It looks a little bit more fresher in the exterior and also when you want the AMG style, that is possible now if you want some sporty style. Well, the uh, vegetable barbecue is also uh, starting next to me. So if you see some smoke going over here, no, we're not smoking weed. But it would fit a little bit to the setup, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, and rest of the Marco Polo, of course, pretty impressive on the interior that you have a high luxury without a toilet. You know, that's the thing. So a big camper would, of course, have a toilet. That's the thing. And yeah, I mean, the price for that is still quite high. So normal V-Class about 40,000 euros if you take German prices. Then a V-Class Marco Polo activity. That's the, you know, the base spec. Well, 50,000 also that around for the so-called Horizon. The Horizon Marco Polo is just with the roof. So the Marco Polo always has this top roof, which you can put up. But however, the normal Marco Polo, without any additional name, also includes the kitchen. So if you go for the Horizon, well, it's really starting to smoke here now. So if you go for the Horizon, you would have the roof, but not the kitchen. As it stands here right now, at least 60,000 with all the kitchen and stuff. And when you put some more extras, you can easily reach 70,000 and even more. That's then again the downside of this vehicle. So much cool stuff we've seen on the interior. It's really, really expensive. What do you think? Also, leave me your comments right there to the Marco Polo.